For this video, I'm going to review Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Master System. Revisiting Sonic the Hedgehog for this review was very rewarding. I am a huge Sega fan. I grew up with the Sega Master System. It was my first uh, video game console that I ever bought. And a lot of people are probably scratching their head because I was one of the few Americans that actually bought a Sega Master System. It was largely rejected over here. The game console itself was actually a huge hit over in Europe and South America, but um, for some reason, uh, poor marketing and distribution killed the system here in North America. When I was a kid in school, everybody was buying the Nintendo Entertainment System to play Super Mario, but I've always been that outsider that never fit with the Nintendo community. Uh, it's just like oil and water. I, I don't click with them at all. The Nintendo fanboys seem to dominate uh, YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of channels that uh, you can always predict the ending before you actually watch it. Great example of this is the Angry Video Game Nerd. Ever watch any of his Sega vs Nintendo comparisons? Well I can save you the trouble and spoil the ending. He always picks the Nintendo. Every single time. That kind of bias crap isn't going to happen on this particular channel. I'm very random and wildly unpredictable so even I don't know what I'm going to pick half the time. I can tell you why I favored the Sega Master System over the Nintendo when I was a kid. I grew up on the Jersey Shore playing arcade games, and the combination of Thunderblade, Outrun, Afterburner, and Altered Beast kind of pushed that system over the top for me, and I, I had to buy a Sega Master System. And in hindsight, I'm really happy I did. I always stayed in the Sega ecosystem, and I upgraded to a Sega Genesis in 1992 and picked up a power base converter so I was able to bring all my Sega Master System titles over to the new game console. And that's something the Super Nintendo players couldn't do. They never had backward compatibility like the Sega players did. So Sonic the Hedgehog was kind of a bittersweet moment for Sega Master System owners in North America. This happened to be the very last new release that the system would get here in America. In this particular situation, they kind of saved the best for last because I'm already spoiling my ending here. But uh, I think Sonic the Hedgehog is the absolute best platforming game for the Sega Master System. And that says a lot because the Sega Master System had some amazing platforming games. Uh, I think uh, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse is a very, very close second to Sonic the Hedgehog. And there were like three or four Sonic the Hedgehog games that came out for the Sega Master System and Game Gear. And for those who aren't familiar, the Game Gear is basically a shrunk down version of the Master System, so the architecture is almost identical. I also think that the very first Sonic the Hedgehog is the best of the Sonic games for the Master System. Each Sonic sequel for the Master System, they kept enlarging the graphics and the sprites, and the games ran slower and slower with each uh, new title. I didn't find Sonic 2 to be nearly as much fun as Sonic 1, and I really didn't like Sonic Chaos at all. So you're probably scratching your head right now saying, how am I talking about future Sonic releases when you, I just said Sonic the Hedgehog 1 was the last release here in North America? Well, after Sega of America phased out the Sega Master System, uh, I learned that the Sega Master System was not a region-locked game console like the Genesis. So I started importing um, games from Europe uh, from a company called Telegames. They used to sell Americans games imported from overseas. And um, even though the Master System was officially dead by 1992, I was still buying new releases for this game console all the way through about 1995. What I think was genius on the part of Sega was they didn't just shrink down the graphics for the 8-bit versions of Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Genesis is completely different from Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Master System. While the gameplay and the controls felt familiar, the level design and the zones were completely different between the two games. So they gave you a reason to own both the 16-bit and the 8-bit versions of the game because they each provided unique experiences and they really do complement each other well in your video game library. Sonic the Hedgehog for the Genesis plays a lot faster and there's a lot more uh, corridors and tunnels for the spin attack uh, to basically show off the, the Genesis uh, processing power and speed. The Master System version of Sonic the Hedgehog is more methodical and slower paced and it's more about jumps and platforms and getting past uh, challenging obstacles. Uh, there's a lot less speed here. This version of Sonic the Hedgehog doesn't have all those tunnels and corridors where you would use your spin attack to uh, navigate. None of the Sonic the Hedgehog games from this era were particularly hard. Uh, the difficulty on this particular game is pretty approachable. Uh, they were definitely trying to attract younger gamers to the fold, and um, this game is pretty easy to beat. You can sit down and, and play through it and beat it in one sitting, and uh, that will probably take you eh, maybe an hour, maybe 90 minutes, something like that. This game does have continues, so you can keep going even if you fail at a level. If there's one disappointment for me, it's definitely the sound. 
You see, the Sega Master System over in Japan had multiple sound processors in the game console. They had the standard sound chip as well as the FM synthesizer chip. Most of the early releases like OutRun and Alter Beast and Double Dragon, they had dual soundtracks uh, built into the game cartridges. When you played games with that FM synthesizer chip, oh man, the, the sound quality was amazing. It sounded a lot like the Commodore Amiga, which was a high-end multimedia computer at the time. Unfortunately, the uh, American Master Systems never got that FM synthesizer chip. It was a cost-cutting move that really hurt the system, in my opinion. Because both the Game Gear and a lot of the newer Master Systems did not have that chip, they stopped programming the FM soundtracks into the cartridges on the later releases, and Sonic the Hedgehog would be an example of that. Sonic the Hedgehog is such a great game on the Master System. I actually think this version is better than the Game Gear version, even though they are architecturally identical. It's just nicer to have the larger screen to see the playboard. You know, they shrink down the resolution on the, the Game Gear version a lot. And uh, even though it's the same game code, I just like having the whole screen to be able to see the, the bosses and being able to have room to attack them. It's a shame what happened to the, the Master System in America. I think uh, Americans really missed out on this particular game console. I actually cringe quite a bit when I'm reviewing NES games because the graphics are so much more primitive. The uh, Sega Master System was a huge leap. Um, it was certainly the most powerful 8-bit game console, uh, and it really did blow away the, uh, the NES for graphics. People don't realize that the NES, by the time it got to the North America, it was pretty old. I mean, I think the Famicom came out in, like, 1983. It was designed to be a peer of, like, the ColecoVision and the Atari 5200. Um, the Sega Master System architecturally just blew it away. The Europeans certainly noticed. I mean, the, the same monopoly that um, NES had over in America, well, the Sega Master System enjoyed that same type of monopoly over in Europe. I mean, I think they had 85% market share uh, for the Sega Master System. So what's my bottom line score for Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Master System? I'm giving this one a perfect score. It's a 10 out of 10. It is the absolute best platforming game on the Sega Master System by far. If you only play two or three games on the Master System in your entire life, you should probably start with Sonic the Hedgehog because this is definitely the best of the breed. Thanks for watching this review of Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Master System. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.